Hey guys, so as predicted, the weather did change. I'll just let you see. I don't know if you can actually see the snowflakes falling. Yeah, you can see them against the house. So I've had to quickly run everything into the tool shed. This is where I've been spending the last few days painting pots for my dahlias. Purple pots, looking rather snazzy. Right there, they got to be for my dahlias. So I'll come in here to plant my potatoes. So these are 10 litre buckets that I'm going to have my King Edwards and my Highland Burgundy, I think it's called. In the bottom here, I've got what would that be about? But up to there, so about a third of the bucket full of uh, my soil mixture, which is soil, chopped up leaves, um, peat, and a little bit of sand as well in the mix. So I've got my potatoes here that have been chitting away the container. There's two of these are actually Highland ones. I'll try and gently get these out and separate them. Now because these are only 10 litre pots I'm only going to be putting one seed potato per pot. I'll just quickly try and separate these ready for the other buckets. Try not to snap too many roots and things but I've actually there's a worm there I don't know if you can yeah you can see what I'm doing there's a worm right there um because I just used the soil out of my garden for these um I should have watered these a bit more towards the end so that they would have been easier to separate but I'm managing okay without too much damage these um because obviously like i just showed you it started snowing again so these are going to be inside for a few days to make sure that they don't freeze outside um i'll just go get some soil The ones that I'm planting here, King Edward, you see there, place to see potato in the centre with the shoots pointing up the way and the roots down obviously and then just gently cover them making sure you cover everything up properly. I'm going to write a big K on the side of all of the King Edward buckets. So I don't have to make a load of labels. Or I might make the labels out of wood. So I do have some larger branches that I can use. So 
giant twig. There we go. Is that one finished? And then I can use the bucket I got the soil in. And so I got no soil in the bottom of it. My next King Edward. Just trying to loosen up the roots a little bit because it's a bit compacted into the corner there. It'll sort itself out. That in the centre again. Careful not to knock off any of the chits. And then obviously like it with the same as the raised bed, I'm not pushing down on the soil. I'll just have to sort itself out. The soil's nice and fine anyway, so it should kind of find its way around the shoots. The larger piece of twigs and stuff is just come from the chopped up leaves. So I think as a new gardener, the biggest issue is finding soil and making your own compost and things when you need it. Because obviously it's things that you need to do ahead of time and if you're brand new at gardening, you've not put that work into it yet. You're not up at that level, so you end up having to buy it. And I really don't want to. It's not so much... Well, it is partly the money because things are a lot more expensive in Sweden. It's also the environmental impact of the plastic bags and shipping and creation of all these things. When I do have the access to the when I have access to leaves and things that I can bring home and chop up myself and I have permission of the owner of the forest then it feels wrong for me anyway it feels wrong for me to buy this stuff so I try to avoid it I do buy things though it's just I try my best to not do it So, I see potatoes in the bottom there. And just add the soil on top of it. Hopefully he can actually see into the bucket and it's not all just my hair in the way. But your time and things as a gardener, as a new gardener, it's very much an investment in the future because I'm just going to take some of these off because there's a bit many. As a new gardener, you're looking to improve your soil quality. And that's a long term goal because that isn't something that happens quickly, it's something that takes a long time. No, three, three or four years maybe that will take before you start seeing results in improving your soil naturally. 
adding a lot of organic matter to the top and working it through or letting it rot down. Last year, in my small attempt to garden, I did a lot of no dig beds, but it was kind of a, it was a half of an attempt. I didn't really know much of the theory behind it. And just kept loading organic matter on top of the beds. And kept the weeds down, which is nice. And I don't have a huge issue with slugs yet. I don't want to say that too loud. In case I jinx myself. That's that one done. So I depleted that bucket a little bit. I'll just add a bit more in the bottom there. Big stone in the middle. Just make sure you can still see what I'm doing. And then my seed potato. Just make sure the roots loosened. We've got See potato in the middle there. Just have to keep checking that you can actually see what I'm doing. Just put these two away. And then just add on some more soil on top. Now I won't be watering these. The soil's quite damp already. And I don't want to waterlog them from the get-go. And see I didn't mix the soil very well. There's quite a lot of the wet, soggy soil in that one. Not an awful lot of leaves. Sure it'll be fine though. If not, it's done now. It's time for the next one. Let's fill up this bucket again. Should get some more. Potatoes. Gently get them out. And this one is like a rock, so hoping I can get some separation without too much damage. I'm just going to separate these first. These are all the King Edwards that I'm growing this year, perhaps. I still have quite a few seed potatoes from this. I didn't want to go overboard because I need places to put everything. And I know King Edwards are, or I've read that King Edwards can be quite poor when it comes to blight resistance. I didn't want to cover the whole garden with it and then find that they got blight quickest. But it's one of those things, when you're a beginner, it could be that the resistance makes minimal difference. I don't know. It's a seed potato separated anyway. Just got to place it in the middle there and then fill it with soil on top. Let's 
gone a bit squint now. There. Oh, and that's actually a bit too low as well. It's probably why I couldn't see it on the camera screen. <laughs> Just fill up a bit more soil on the bottom. Should be enough. Place it back in the centre again. Roots down and shoots up. Just gently add in the soil here. I've noticed as I'm getting to the bottom of my barrel for. The, uh, the wheelbarrow. I haven't mixed it properly, so there's some stuff that's a bit um, wet and very soily. But as it's snowing outside, I don't really fancy going and getting more leaves and messing about with my mix now. Is <laughs> that one done? Next one, we go, loosen up the roots on the seed potato again, just a little bit, place it in the centre there, and just making sure that I've still got battery and memory on the camera, and that I'm not on actually planting and speaking to myself. Then just add the soil on top. Like I said it's getting very soggy here so it's not sprinkling as nice as it was in the beginning. twigs again. So there we go. That's seven pots I've done now. And I've a few to go. Another earthworm. Um yeah, I've got I think I had well seven um eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen 14, no, yeah, 14, so I've got 14 King Edward, I think I've got about 12 of the Highland Burgundy, so I have a few more pots to do, but um, I just wanted to show you what I was doing, give you a demonstration of how I was doing it, this is the way I'm doing it this year, by next year I might see that the way I did it this year wasn't the best or the easiest way. This is the fun with gardening and learning new skills. You get to learn all the time. It doesn't matter how old you get. It's always something new you can learn. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Bye.